Hey everyone. Hi. Hey everyone. How's everyone doing? Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Just let me know if you can hear me. I know there's a few seconds delay. Uh, oh, hey, Cece. Hello, Karen. Good sound. Tracy, Michelle, Delina, Suzanne. Oh, and the very lovely Amy is in chat as well. And so is Kasha. Hey, everyone. Uh, just wanted to apologize a little bit about if the lighting looks a bit funny. Because <laughs> I have some really huge windows right in front of my desk. And the sun is like shining right in. And when I looked at it, it looked really yellow. So I've just turned my studio lights on. So maybe my lighting might be a bit off, but we can work with it. All good. Amy says all perfect. So if Amy says all is perfect, then I'm going to trust her. <laughs> Let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Uh, I'm based here in the UK. Uh, so I'm more down south to Kashia. Uh, where Everything Art HQ is. I wanted to say welcome to everyone for tuning in. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, my name is Tanya, Tanya Emmett, and I am a mixed media artist, serial gel printer, and just you will often find me covered in glitter glue or paint or cat hair or some food that my toddler has chucked at me. <laughs> So I am more down south, uh, based near London, and if you can tell from my funny accent, I am uh, originally from Pakistan, and I've uh, been in the UK for uh, over 15 years now, and I absolutely love my life, and I cannot believe that I am here teaching a live stream to you guys. <laughs> yes, cat hair, cat hair. If cat hair gets on your projects, that counts as mixed media. Um, <laughs> in Coventry, ah, that's lovely, Suzanne. My my in laws live in Coventry, so we're often there um, once or twice a month. Uh, hello from India. Hello, neighbor. Uh, Warwickshire, York, lots of Brits here. Someone from a uh, Finn here as well it's from Southampton. Oh my goodness, you guys are absolutely amazing. This chat is just flying by, and I am loving it. And just making sure that I just have all the, I just changed my chat settings so that I could see all of you. So today, today, people, lovely people of Wanderlust Liveland, we are going to be playing with these magical markers. Now, these are watercolor brush markers. If uh, anyone has ever used watercolor brush markers before, let me know in the comments, or if you've never tried them or are looking forward to trying them out. I absolutely love these so much. Oh my goodness. You know, I love someone something a lot when I start whispering and start stroking it, calling it my precious. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, thank you so much. I, I can see a lot of followers here from my uh, social media as well. And I am so thrilled, so honored, so excited uh, to be teaching for Wanderlust. Uh, with, this will be my fourth year. Oh my goodness, this is my fourth year. And also uh, to commemorate uh, my fourth year teaching, I also did a podcast interview with Kashi as well. So if you follow me on my social media, uh, there's a link to the podcast. It's called The Crafter Math. And there is a, a very intimate conversation with Kasia, how she started, how Wanderlust started, how the company Everything Art started. And uh, if you're a big fan of Wanderlust, then I would highly recommend that you uh, listen to that interview as well. Uh, so let me know in the comments if uh, you guys have uh, are thinking about uh, signing up to Wanderlust or if you already signed up, I would love to know. Uh, so some people are asking, what brand are these? No, so these are the Altenew ones. So the, the spelling is A-L-T-E-N-E-W. And they are a brand that's based in America. And uh, you can get many different uh, brands of these watercolor brush markers. I, I like these because of 
uh, their colors. And uh, yeah, they're just, they're just absolutely magical to work with. And the topic of my, uh, my <laughs> stream is three ways, but actually there might be more than three ways. Uh, three ways actually sounds a bit catchier than seeing a bazillion different ways to work with watercolor brush markers. <laughs> Uh, yes, the old uh, Jane Davin Davenport ones. Uh, uh, yes, they're they're very very similar to these. Uh, they they it, the colors are slightly different, but they work in exactly the same way. Uh, and wow, so many lovely people. So what I'm going to do is, uh, what time is it? It is seven past, and we're just going to jump right in because you don't want to watch me waffling on about how lovely these things are you want to watch do some creating so uh i'm just gonna uh switch my camera on so bear with us uh and i'm also wearing my wanderlust live uh apron as well which i think is gonna get stained today <laughs> so let's see uh so let me give me a few uh, minutes and i'll switch my camera around and let me know whether you guys are just watching or just playing around and how many other uh, streams have you been watching because I've been doing my best to log in and have a look and uh, support all the other teachers as well and I've been absolutely loving all the different sessions just the, the variety of teachers is just fabulous uh, so you guys can you let me know if you can see and hear everything all right and I haven't even begun and my desk is a mess already <laughs> Yes, the Ecoline and the Zig, they are very similar as well. Uh, these have a different kind of uh, dispensing mechanism. So they flow out of uh, the, um, the nib in a different way. So I'm just going to grab a handful of them. Let me put my paint brushes to the side. And you can get, guys can get an idea of the beautiful colors that there are. So there's, there's three sets in here that are mixed up. And, uh, oh, this is reversed. Oh, dear. I hope that I can, can I fix this? Uh, never mind. I'm not going to mess around with this. Uh, this is unfortunately reversed. I was going to do some calligraphy. So hopefully I can think and figure out how I can, um, uh, go with it. So the kind of paper that I'm going to be working on is just really, really thick cardstock. So it's 300 GSM cardstock, uh, and it's really smooth. Uh, if you wanted to, you could work with uh, uh, watercolor paper as well. Uh, but because today we're having a play, I am not going to be worrying about uh, paper. And uh, just we're just going to have a play. So I'm just show you guys uh, different ways of how uh, you can, uh, different ways uh, and give you an idea of my style as well, uh, what kind of art journals I make and just show you what kind of uh, work that you can do with these uh, watercolor markers. So we're gonna be making a, an art journal page similar to this, but incorporating a few more techniques into it. So you can see that these watercolor markers, they're highly, highly pigmented. And the fact that they're in a brush shouldn't let you stop them from using uh, them in uh, all sorts of fun, different ways. Uh, I like to decant them. I like to put them in mist bottles. I like to dilute them. I like to add uh, in. Um... So can you guys see that, that the hope is correct then? Or is the hope reversed? So, uh so there's you can you can uh, use these as watercolors the words are correct as well oh that's so weird because on my screen it's reversed that is really strange marcia oh my friend marcia is here marcia i'm gonna start crying now you guys my friend my very very good creative friend marcia walk is here who is one of the best the best video crafter <laughs> film makers that it is. If you had get a chance to get to check her out. So back to my art journal. Uh, so the watercolor markers, because they're dye based, they will react with uh, with water. And you can do all sorts of fun techniques with them, like lifting the colors 
and uh yeah it's it's just there's just a ton of fun so but do keep in mind that any layers that you put on top of them uh you need to be mindful that they might move around a bit like for example i have used the watercolor markers uh here on the background but when i put a text the texture paste on top it absorbed some of the medium. I'm not sure it's going to pick up on the camera that much, but it has picked up some of the color of the uh, medium underneath. So it will react again. And then I have colored these flowers in with uh, the watercolor brush markers as well, which is what we're going to be doing. So to start off, if you've got any uh, mediums that are new to you, uh, then the first thing I always, always suggest is if you have like a, a fear of uh, kind of um, uh, using a new product, then my first th tip is, top tip is take it out of its packaging so that it's not pristine anymore and start doing swatching with them. So swatching is one of the best ways that you can get to learn a new medium. So let me just put my uh, journal to the side just to give you guys an idea of uh, the kind of um, watercolor, what my kind of art journaling style is. Uh, so to start off, what you're going to do is you're just going to swatch them. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. So with watercolor, uh, with these watercolor brush markers, as you can see, they're highly, highly pigmented. And let me grab some kitchen roll as well. And you can do all sorts of fun techniques with them as well. So if you wanted to, you could just lift off some of that color and that will um, that will give you like a softer effect if you wanted to do clouds with them as well. And uh, let me bring a uh, an acrylic block over so I can use that as a palette. And so that I can show you guys, you can do all sorts of fun techniques with them. And And your swatch doesn't have to be anything fancy. All you need to do is just swatch them up and just write what they are. Just don't overthink this. Honestly, it's, it's one of my top tips about when you are struggling with your creative mojo and you're not sure what to do, then you just swatch your, uh, swatch your supplies. So if you're watching this and you're having analysis paralysis and you're not sure what I'm doing is what the heck is she doing, uh, just take out whatever supply you have and start swatching. Because I guarantee you, just doing a really small uh, amount of crafting, even if it's just swatching, which might not sound very sexy, but uh, honestly, it will get you into that mood of just using a medium and using a color and just seeing what it does and having a play. And you can see just how, can you guys see how exquisitely vibrant these are? I mean, seriously, seriously. Are you guys seeing these? They are just a ton of fun. And I don't know about the other brands, but with these uh, watercolor brush markers, uh, you can get re-inkers as well. So if you don't want to get them in this kind of brush format, you can just get the re-inkers as well. So if you want to have a look to see what the re-inkers look like, just remind me towards the end of the stream and I can show you guys the packaging of what they look like. So swatching is my number one tip of how to use any new medium and just have a play and have zero expectations of creating a masterpiece. So in this class, if you're trying something out for the first time, I want you to park your expectations at the door because we do not judge ourselves here. We are kind to ourselves because we are all learning and I have been arting and crafting and making messes for god knows how many decades and I, I am still in the process of learning uh the chat seems to have died is it still have I have I killed you guys with my boredom <laughs> just let me know if you guys can still hear me because I don't know why the chat's just died uh so to start off my first favorite way of we are swatching oh that's good that's good to hear so my first uh, favorite way of um, using these uh brush markers is 
let me show you guys so this is this is i you can do calligraphy with them which is uh i'd show you guys how to do it and i'll give you tips on how you can practice your calligraphy as well uh you can do these watercolor style roses with them as well uh i'll show you how to make uh, these watercolor roses i could easily create a whole background of these but i'm not gonna do that um because <laughs> we want to be trying different techniques and this could take me the whole session just to just making roses so i'll show you how i make these roses so to start off uh let's see what colors are we fancying today people uh i always tend to go for purples and blues but if you guys want to give me an idea of give me two colors and then i will work with those i definitely want to work with some greens so to make some leaves to show you guys uh and you're trying to clean up a leaking pen so with these pens i would recommend that you store them straight up like this don't store store them flat because if you store them flat they might uh leak because of the valve uh that is in these brush pens so with these pens the other pens that i have like the poscas the alcohol markers um my all my other markers i store them flat but with these ones i store them upright like this and if you're wondering what all these dots are on them uh, I have I've marked them out so that it tells me what set they belong to, because sometimes I have to do blog posts and uh, I have to know which I have to work with a particular set. So this quickly tells me that all the yellow ones are belong belong to one set and all the uh, red ones belong to one set. So I just a reminder, I have three. So lots of pinks, pinks and orange, lots of oranges. OK, people are feeling oranges today. So let's go with orange so uh let's test out what color so this is this is one which is called sun kiss yep we got go with this orange and what pink shall we go for shall we go for this is this rubellite this is this is one of my favorites so we go with rubellite uh actually let's go with a slightly darker one we go with this one this is called purple wine so what i'm gonna do is uh these markers they have like a little uh, point over here where it says pre press so what i'm going to do is i uh, on an on an acrylic block or on a palette or, or whatever surface you're working on i'm just going to squeeze out some of the uh the watercolor ink on here and these are dye based and so they're highly pigmented i'm just going to place that there so that i have that they're ready to use and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be working with this marker, but I'm going to squeeze some out so I can dab into that afterwards. Now, to start off, uh, what brands are best to start off with? Uh, I would recommend the Alta New ones because they are a really good price point, personally. But if you want to, you can shop around. But I, I really love these Alta New ones because of their colors, and I think they're really good value for money. Uh, you store yours upright and they still leak. They are <laughs> very stubborn <laughs> markers you have. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so I'm going to be working with the lighter uh, watercolor brush marker first. And then I'm going to dip my uh, pen into that, that purple wine color. And then how I personally like, there's many different ways of... Uh, making roses watercolor roses but this is one of my favorites so what i start off with is i make a little tiny little c and then i start making more intersecting c's and i start making them a bit larger and then a bit larger and then i start interlocking them and the key is to wrap the ends so that it kind of looks like a cupped rose and then you just keep working and then when you press it down the key is if you if you first you do a light press and then you press it down, you get that wide uh, paint swipe. And then when you lift it up, you get that small kind of tip as well. So that's a way that you can make a leaf as well. So I'm just going to make complete that and make that a leaf. And 
there you have a watercolor style leaf there. So that's what I'm doing with these uh, markers here. So just going to continue making more of these and there is your rose and then it's it's slightly darker in the middle if you wanted to you could add some more colors in just to darken it up a little bit and the way the ink works is uh, I started with a darker color by dipping that in and when I start working more towards the out, uh, outer petals the colors will lighten up and honestly I'm just going to show you guys one more time so just start with a C a tiny little C and then you make another C interlock it and then just press it down interlock and then interlock and it doesn't have to be uh, like really precise I'm not uh, overthinking this but again I have practiced this a lot as well uh, so practice is key and one of the tips that uh one of the things that i learned this was a hard lesson for me to learn because in the beginning when you're learning uh this is a uh, there's this quote by ira ira glass uh which i'm butchering right now but the quote goes something along these lines that you don't like what you make because you have good taste and when you have good taste you're you don't like what you've produced because it doesn't match what you think looks good from the image in your head to what you've made with your hands. So to get to that ideal place of what a, a thing should look like in your head, it requires a lot of practice. And so this is something that, you know, just stick with it and just keep practicing. And with eventually with time, you will learn. So the key is just practice, 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 practice. So uh, so that's another way that you can use these watercolor brush markers. So we are at 23 past. So I think what we're going to do is let's drive straight in and create our art journal page. So uh, actually, let's color in our image first so that it can dry. And uh, so uh, I've already prepared this uh, beforehand. And uh, this is this is uh, an image that I've stamped uh, with some waterproof ink. So it's important that if you're working with um, uh, your water coloring this with uh, with your brush markers, then it's important that you use an ink that doesn't budge. Uh, so this is a waterproof ink that I've stamped with. So uh, let's start. Let me bring in uh, my uh, paints. So this is going to be like a really loose, uh, the, the Tanya's, Tanya's way of painting in <laughs> flowers. So I'm just slightly wetting my um, my brush just a tiny bit and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up a tiny amount of paint on there actually let's bring in some uh, a lighter color in as well so this is one called cotton candy this is a really pale pink I think that might be a nice transitional color in so we're going to start off with there and then pick up a little bit of there. So I just love being able to mix in these colors and you can create all sorts of gradients. So what I'm doing is I am, this is, this is, if anyone here is a watercolor artist, please don't judge me. I am not a watercolor artist, but I love uh, creating, faking a, uh, my way into giving like a watercolor kind of effect so what I simply did was because these these uh, inks are highly reactive with uh, water I can create some really easy blended effects without much uh, effort so what I'm doing is I concentrated uh, uh, most of the color towards the edge of the flower and then I cleaned up my brush 
and then I'm using water from that brush and I'm just pulling some of that color towards the outer edges. So that's giving me kind of like a blended effect. Okay, so I, the chat's gone really quiet again. <laughs> Have you guys been having a nice day? So I'm just lifting off that some of that color. And if I've got too much pigment on there, I can just I can just use some water and lift some of that color away. And then you can just use your kitchen towel as well. So I let me just are these flowers? Yes, let's assume they are flowers. Let's do a slightly darker color on there and then we pull some of that color and then just use water to move that color. So yes, the the stamp ink. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to take it as a good sign that you guys are actually working along with me. Uh that you guys are busy. So that's a good thing that you guys are actually crafting as well. So the stamp ink needs to be archival, not water soluble. Yes, that is correct. The uh, ink that I am using is uh, by Altenew as well. It's called Obsidian. It's an oil-based ink. So that works really well with uh, watercolor mediums. So it's I'm not doing like a really fancy job with the watercoloring. Honestly, guys, is this is like minimum effort, effort and maximum impact. I am all about that. Because I am impatient and I want to be able to get on with things and not spend hours on watercoloring if you wanted to you could do that if that gives you joy then you you should absolutely do that but when when uh, if you're if you're a busy busy person like uh like many of us are then this is like my quick and easy way of just getting like a watercolory kind of effect without spending too much time on them and you could do this absolutely with your uh, watercolors as well. But I just love how reactive these inks are. So uh, what weight paper is the image stamped onto? So I am working on 300 GSM uh, cardstock. But if you wanted to, you could use, uh, you could definitely use um, uh, watercolor paper. So I'm just darkening up the center of that and just seeing where else I want to add a, a little bit more. And just going to add just a few dabs here and there just to give it a little bit more of a watercolory kind of impressionistic <laughs> kind of feel. Yes, so if you struggle with watercolors, pan watercolors, then I would definitely recommend these. They're very versatile. I mean, they're in brush form. You can use them uh, as they are, and you can also uh, do all sorts of other fun techniques with them as well. And I uh, like mixing them with other mediums. So I have uh, some uh, pearlescent, uh, water reactive spray that I mix them with and that gives you your very own customized uh, kind of uh, uh, pearly watercolor spray uh, paint um, and I mix it with uh, texture paste as well you can mix it with clear embossing powder to colorize and make your own custom color embossing powder as well just make sure that it's super dry uh, after you've added in the color and you can create some really amazing uh, galaxy backgrounds with them as well uh, you can do splatter effects with them uh, I just I just 
I love a product that I can get multiple uses out of. Um, that water looks like a cup of tea. Are you sure? <laughs> are you using the right thing? <laughs> well, uh, that's why I don't have a cup of tea over here in front of me because because if I I I have done this before, like many of you, where I've put uh, my paintbrush in my tea and I have cried because <laughs> sometimes you really want that cup of tea and just when it gets ruined, then it's sad. It's it's a sad day <laughs> when that happens. So I'm I'm not doing like a, a a really fancy job with the painting, you guys. Is I am just putting in color where I think it needs it here and there, and just just darkening it up along the veins. And if you wanted to give it like a slightly more browny shade, you can mix it in because this will the colors will kind of that will give us a little bit of tone. It's moving that color around a little bit as well. And I'm getting like a third really lovely kind of mauvey kind of brown shade there, which I actually really like. So we're we're gonna be done with that. You could honestly spend more time on this, but this, I I am just going to call this one uh, done. We can do some more afterwards if we have time, but I'm going to set this aside to dry. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> have you guys ever had uh, an occasion where you've, uh, you've made something, you put it aside and it's just gone, just gone completely walkabout? gone missing <laughs> you can also stamp and then heat emboss which gives a raised line and that yes that is correct that is my another uh top tip that you can just do some heat embossing uh and uh, uh the raised edges will kind of act as a well for your watercolor do we want to do a single page or a double page I think let's do a double page, but we'll finish a single page and see how it looks. <laughs> I was watching a lady sketching on a post accidentally stuck her brush in her coffee. <laughs> so she decided to paint for the coffee. <laughs> well, coffee painting is amazing. It's, it's like you can get some beautiful stains with the uh, coffee. So, uh, we have, this is the color we've got. Uh, so, to offset this, the colors I want to use in the background are maybe, let's do, let us do, so before I put this down, let's do a swatch a rule and check what this color looks like. Oh, I love that one. Oh, I dripped some paint on there. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. But never mind. We can make this work. Let's see if we can lighten up that color just a tiny bit or maybe just make that whole flower blue. That's fine. You guys, I think we're going to add some splatters on top and then we will make it work. We'll make it work. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. Stay. Uh, so uh, actually, let's use this turquoise and we'll use this color. And what third color shall we do? Want to keep it neutral. So we let's do evening gray so uh we are going to you can do directly onto your um your art journal page you can apply the the markers directly onto your art journal page but today i actually quite fancy 
using a small gel plate. Because seeing that Iris uh, used a gel plate in her uh, in her class, I wanted. So I kind of knew that you guys already had a gel plate in your stash. So if you wanted to, you could just use like a, a clear sheet of uh, plastic to apply your ink onto your background. But I had these nearby. So this is what I'm going to be using. So I've just put the ink on the on the gel plate and again if you wanted to you could just use a clear acrylic sheet but I quite like the squidge of a gel plate. I have sipped sip my I have the <laughs> yes Arlene I have sipped my paint water by accident as well. So you can see how pigmented that is you guys. How delicious is that? My hands are going to get messy and that makes me happy. Paint water is not delicious. <laughs> Amy, how do you know that? So what I'm doing is this is when when I'm not sure about uh, where to place my elements, I tend to go with opposite corner, opposite corner for a spread. And then I also like to think in terms of uh, uh, layers of three. Uh, one, these are similar to uh, mermaid markers. Uh, these are by Altenew. They're called watercolor brush markers, but the uh, the mermaid markers are very, very similar to this. Do the Altenew markers soak through your art journal pages? Uh, uh, it depends on your art journal page. This is a mol moleskin, moleskin uh, art journal. They are bleeding through a little bit, but not too much. Um, so there we have some really fun cloud, cloud-like effects. Um, You can't paint and type. You guys, I think I'm. I'm. I, it makes me really happy to hear that you are crafting and uh, creating alongside me. So I'm just. Uh, this is. This is just some water in here. I'm just going to go off camera and spritz some water on here to dilute that ink just a tiny bit because I don't want to put too much on there. Uh, just looking at the chat. So I'm just using this. This is like a, a gray uh, kind of color. Not going to use too much of that. So again, just keeping the, the odd numbers in mind. So I've got blue in three places and I've got gray in two places. Just going to get rid of as much of that paint as possible. Let me move this up. Give myself a little bit more room to breathe. Now we've got that. Where did our art journal page, uh, that flower go? So I think we might put that on there. We will definitely put that on there. And let me put my gel print of the gel plate away. My baby gel plate. And 
so for the next technique, what we're going to be doing is, let me give this a clean. I'm bringing over some uh, texture paste. And I have a palette knife. Yes, you can you can do that, Elizabeth. You can put your uh, gel plate on a uh, on an acrylic block, but I wanted to be able to manipulate uh, the paint uh, a bit more. So I just uh, I just use my hands. And if you're someone who doesn't like uh, getting their hands too messy, then you are more than welcome to use gloves. Um, what color shall we do? Let's do ruby light. So this is texture paste, and I'm just adding in just a touch of the uh, the watercolor ink to the texture paste. So this way you can colorize and create your own custom texture base. I'm just gonna give that a mix. I'm not going to mix it in too much. Uh, it'd be nice to see some of the streaks of that color in there. And do keep in mind that if you add a lot of uh, your dye ink to your texture paste, then you could risk making it a bit uh, too runny, but that can be something uh, fun to do as well. So I've got some stencils here which stencil do I fancy using? Do we want to use a star? Shall we do some arrows, some damask patterns, chevrons, or stars? Let's have a vote. Guys, I'm going to mix my texture paste, and you guys let me know. Uh, should I? Which one of these stencils should I use? Should I use the chevron, the damask, the arrows, or the stars? I think I want to add a little bit more color to that. The uh, mask chevron. A oh dear, Amy, Amy, help! Tell me who's what. What's been voted on the most? Amy. Uh, I I think Damask is winning, guys. Damask. Damask. Okay. Okay, so let's go with Damask then. The people have spoken. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add a lot of... Uh, cover the whole page I'm just going to do it in spots just placing a piece of paper underneath so that I don't get it on the other side of my damask wow it's almost unanimous so with my uh, texture paste I am not being overly careful with it and I'm not going for an even coverage here. I think it might be a bit too watery and gone under some of the stencil parts, but let's see. Oh, not bad. I just love how that pink pops against the blue. Oh, that makes me happy. So we've done that there. What part do we want to... Let's put some of these back in the jar. Shall we do some on this part here? Quite fancy doing it on this part. Let's use up. Uh, yes, uh, Tammy, that is probably wise uh, to dry it uh, because I didn't put on too much ink on there. Uh, with my style of art journaling, I like to work in uh, thin, thin layers uh, because first of all, I'm impatient. And then secondly, uh, I most of the time when I do get a chance to uh, craft or make art is when my toddler is sleeping and I can't really turn my heat gun on. 
when she's sleeping, she's a very light sleeper. Unfortunately, takes after her mama. And uh, so by uh, because of that, I have to work in layers that I know will dry fast. Oh, that is that looks really nice. I'm really happy with that. So I've got some uh, texture paste on there. I'm just going to bring in another one of my art journals. And normally when I'm crafting or making art, I don't work on just one spread at a time. I'm normally working on multiple spreads. Oh, this is <laughs> how funny that opened on that page. This is a lesson from one of uh, the previous Wanderlust. I think this is from the, the Wanderlust 2021. Um, what? So this is, this is a journal that I normally use just to get rid of uh, any excess paint that I might have. So I'm just wiping off my stencil so that I am not wasting any of that medium that's on my stencil. And it's very, very ghostly, but it's, I'm wondering if the camera will focus and you guys can see it on there. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. Let me just turn the overhead light on because it's gotten very dark all of a sudden. That's, that's British weather for you guys. It's just so unpredictable. Now, before this dries, let me clean up my palette knife and put that away. And clean that as well. We'll give it a wash afterwards set this aside now before this dries i want to do some heat embossing on there and i have some lovely rose gold embossing powder and i don't want to cover the whole thing because i still want some of that pink to come through so i'm just going to pick up some of that uh embossing powder with my uh fingers and just like putting like pinches of the embossing powder on some parts of that texture paste and because the texture paste is still wet the embossing powder is going to stick to wherever that wet texture paste is so it's really important when you're doing this that the your background is dry so you can see that the texture paste is on the embossing powder is stuck to where the texture paste is let me just get rid of that and then we'll just turn our heat tool on
Now you saw me warm the backside of uh, my R journal page as well, because basically what happens when you uh, heat up your paper, the fibers of your paper shrink. And when uh, in, in proper printmaking, when they use embossing powder or thermography powder, as it's called in the printmaking world, they run it through these giant machines. And when they heat set the embossing powder, the heat is applied from both the bottom and the top. And it's really high temperatures, but the paper moves through really quickly and it gets evenly heated on both sides, which allows that uh, paper to stay as straight as possible. So this is why if you're heat setting something, uh, then it's important that you heat set it from both sides. Uh, so that way the paper fibers will shrink evenly if that kind of makes sense. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, Adriana, you can, I highly encourage you to use what you have. You don't have to use the exact same supplies that I do. Um, okay, so, so as you guys can see, can you see that the slight shimmer of the embossing powder that's on there, but you can still see some of that pink uh, showing through as well. Uh, there you can see some of that shimmer there as well. So as you can see, I mean, my, my paper has warped a little bit, but not too much. It is still mostly flat. That's because I've heated it from both sides. So if you're finding that your paper is curling up a bit too much, then heat it from the other side. Uh, suggestions for a heat gun. Um, well, to be honest, this, this heat tool I have is really old. It's over 10 years old. It's by a company called Wow Embossing Powder. And uh, in fact, I don't think they do the same style of heat gun anymore. I think they have a two speed heat tool now, uh, which you can look into. Uh, but if I uh, if I, I would, I personally am uh, saving up to get myself a Ranger heat tool because of um, how quiet it is. I need something that's quiet. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a lawnmower. <laughs> so how much time do we have? We have seven minutes. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, let me bring in uh, and let's do some calligraphy. And we can stick this down. I think that would look nice there. Maybe with a pencil. I can't find. There's no pencil here, which is really odd. Normally I'm surrounded by pencils. Uh, I want to do some really uh, sketchy journaling here. So just with my journaling is mostly about how I'm feeling in the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to write my thoughts about how much I've been, been enjoying this. And my 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 journaling is often deliberately uh, messy and often hidden. But basically, I'm writing about how much I'm enjoying this session. Um, my live stream. And that I feel really blessed to be able to do the thing that I love. And honestly, I think without the support of uh, all of my lovely followers, some of whom are watching, and my friends, I don't think that I'd be doing what I am doing right now because this is like, this is crazy, you guys. I mean, I, I was a student. I was a wanderlust student. And to think that I am a tutor on here now, it's just, uh, it just, it blows my mind. <laughs> it really does blow my mind. So uh, I want to do, do uh, a word. Uh, what word do I feel like doing right now shall we do blessed uh 
Um, tell me to drop. Let's do dream. Ah, uh, Celtic peasant. Another one of my lovely followers. Uh, so that that pencil that I was using, this is a China graph pencil uh, or a China marker. And uh, so what was the word that we're going to do? Um, dream. Let's do dream. So with with calligraphy, it's again all about practice. And these pens, these brush markers are an absolute dream to do calligraphy with. And uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of the 100 day project. But a few years ago, my 100 day project was uh, practicing my calligraphy. And in fact, I actually have that journal here. And every day I focused on a different uh, letter of the alphabet and I practiced and practiced and practiced. And uh, it actually made a huge difference. And literally I didn't spend more than 10 minutes a day. Um, so I'm just gonna cut out. So as Amy said, in just a few minutes, uh, you, uh, the, the next uh, lesson is going to start and Amy has just put in the link to the lesson as well. And then what you can do is you can just cut this out uh, just really roughly. I'm just going to I'm going to switch the camera around so that I can say my final goodbyes while I am cutting. my uh sentiment you guys you guys are absolutely amazing thank you so much for watching and for following along and you uh, one of the best audiences that i do live classes for um so if you are interested in uh signing up uh wanderlust is uh still available uh the wonderful team at everything art has opened up another thousand seats uh for uh, with the early bird price of $99, which I for 47 lessons, I think it works out to less than $2 per, per video. And honestly, it's really worth it because uh, one of the things that I struggle with the most is accountability. And when you are invested in and working with uh, lessons that you're going to get weekly, then you are going to keep going and it's such an amazing supportive community there's a facebook group uh there are online forums as well attached to the class and you can honestly check them out and yeah it's just it's just highly recommended and it, i i always learn so much because there's so many different styles of uh tutors on there as well uh, but yeah, so what I've done is I've just cut my uh, word out. I will uh, cut it out some more. And then you can just stick down your sentiment. I'm just using some uh, gel medium. Just going to dab some on there. And just stick that down. And... It, to finish this art journal page off, I'm going to add some splatters on there as well. So I'm just going to cut my word out. I'll stick it down there and that's it. But thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, take care and have a great day and hope to guys see you guys in the next stream. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.